Getting your settlement to level 6 is quite the journey, but the rewards are pretty insane, like new things for your ship, a completely new mount, and way, way more. So in this video, I will share everything you unlock at rank 6, some tips on how to get there, and more. A like on this video would really help me out. And let's go. Of course, an obvious thing you need to do is complete all the raid locations in the game. They are along the shore, of course, so just explore the full map by boat and then you will find all the red raid locations. And you really need to complete them all. So get the big chest there with the raw materials because after upgrading every building in your settlement to get it to rank 6, you will exactly have zero raw materials left over. So leave no raid location untouched. Supplies are a different beast though. You of course also get them out of these big raid chests. But you'll not have enough from just that. And a high chance that after finishing the main story and doing some side content, you will still not have the required amount of supplies for a settlement level 6 upgrade. So you also need to get the supplies from these smaller chests. So totally when doing raids, look out for these smaller chests to get 100 supplies extra per chest. And if we look at the supplies icon in your inventory, you see that you find them mainly in civilian locations. So that includes raid locations. So even like refisting those if you miss the smaller chest is totally worth it. But villages or cities also count, although it's not a guarantee to get there. Also good to keep in mind is that a city like London counts as a civilian area. The garrison and other guarded areas though, so restricted areas, do not count as a civilian's area. Meaning that you will likely not find supplies there. So it's smarter to really stick to the monasteries, so raid locations or just regular parts of a village. Look for the small wealth dots and then at some point you will have enough supplies for the required buildings. You can of course see which buildings can be upgraded, which are burnt soon in, and some buildings really need more than two upgrades, so keep checking them. And of course some houses and things are linked to specific features in your settlement, but there are also buildings that are linked to the feast buff, so upgrading them increases that buff. You can activate this buff by ringing the bell next to the longhouse and when you are on settlement level 6 you get plus 3 range damage, plus 3 armor, plus 3 melee damage, 50 extra health and 15.2 increased assassination damage for 3 hours of in-game time. Which is quite a lot, it only costs a few silver but I think it's a pretty nice buff for sure. But more exciting are the new cosmetic items that you can buy. And I want to thank Siat for that. For like sharing the new items that you unlock with settlement level 6. I will link to his channel in the video description. We now got to rank 6 as well. And I want to like showcase these items while sailing too. So you have to buy them at the merchant in your settlement. And they are 460 silver a piece. And there are 5 pieces per naval set. So... Having a lot of silver will totally be necessary to get everything. And then you have to go to the shipyard to equip everything. And then you already see it. But it's of course way cooler to go to the docks and then see it on your ship. And I gotta say like the figurehead and the tail of this Izu naval set is really awesome. Like with the thunder effect going on. And it really outshines the rest of the ship. Like it doesn't feel completely Izu to me. But just having these two, like the figurehead and the tail, is already great. And you also unlock the very awesome Niflheim ship. That is more my style. I prefer red. And the figurehead here completely steals the show with the massive molten horns. A chain around it that we also see at the tail of the ship. Like, this all looks way better together in my opinion. We got this sort of molten lava stripe that covers the hull. Also the figurehead when turning your camera around looks great. And is it like a lava effect that we see in the water? Really, really cool. So it's nice that great looking naval content is also a reward for upgrading your settlement to the final level. Because other cool naval content is mostly found in the Animus store. And before I show you other things you unlock at settlement level 6, a quick reminder that I'm of course doing a weekly Helix credit pack giveaway. If you haven't participated yet, click the link in the pinned comment to win 2300 credits. I will email the winner and announce it very, very soon. Another thing you unlock is the Reen Mount. That, as you maybe know, is the mount that you also summon in the Mythical Worlds. So I completed everything in Asgard and did all the story missions and thought, okay, 
maybe I then finally unlock this mount for England. Well, turns out that it will just suddenly appear at your stable for 800 silver after getting the settlement to level 6. It's a bit of a letdown that this is the way that you get this mount, but that's overall with rewards in this game. Unlocking them makes absolutely no sense. There's no connection with the item and sort of the activity that you have to do. But at least this mount is not trapped in Asgard and Jotunheim because it's of course cool to have something different than a horse without spending extra money and I really like the large horns just a cool mount to have in your selection. You can also buy a completely new weapon at the merchant called the Mark of Soul. That is the first and I think only weapon that is silver at the Fender. So you can buy it for 700 silver and on one end it's not really worth it. But I do think that you can make it worth it. First of all it's a predator bow that looks pretty cool. It's beefy when aiming and has multiple rings around it. But the perk is that when low health, so below the 50% health, you get extra ability damage and also on top of that 20 extra back damage. But yeah, for a predator bow this doesn't really make sense because if you like snipe enemies when approaching a camp you are almost always at max health so then you don't have the perk active. So you have to get hit first and then try and hit the back of the enemy to get the increased back damage or use an ability with the predator bow but Using a predator bow in regular combat with enemies around you is just not ideal. Also weird is that when below the 50% health you see an icon appear above your health indicating that the perk from the predator bow is active. But the icon is different than the icon we see when inspecting the weapon in the inventory menu. So not sure what's going on there. The thing is with the perk of course that you do not have to use the predator bow to benefit from the extra back damage and ability damage. So I think in that instance instance it's pretty nice to use a sword instead and try to focus on the back of the enemies or do abilities that do damage. So just anything that doesn't involve shooting the bow that actually has the perk. Then it's actually pretty good and it's also interesting that this bow has two effects instead of one perk that we see on the other bows. Also worth noting is that at level 6 you can buy tungsten ingots so basically all the ingots to upgrade your gear at the blacksmith i already mentioned it in my farm video and still think that that's the best way to get tungsten ingots but still worth noting here and you can also buy a scroll of knowledge for 700 silver that gives you one skill point and there are five in stock and i think it resets when the shop resets as well so that's another way to level up in the game but I will touch more on it in a future video. So totally subscribe for everything in Sasquatch Valhalla. If you haven't already, a like on this video would really help the channel out. And a totally check out my previous video on amazing skills, abilities and an armor set that are really powerful. But that you might not be using now. So check it out. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.